Today, the globalization process is not only the driving force behind the progress, but the source for tectonic faults on the political map of the world that hits the religious system of values. The new hotspots, the relapse of block mentality, terrorism committed under the guise of religious rhetoric, all of these threaten security and humanity's existence. Kazakhstan's experience has never been so crucial. It has proved that inter-ethnic and inter-confessional society may live in peace and accord together. Unity in diversity is the main principle of the domestic policy of Kazakhstan. This policy has been pursued through the initiative of the president, Nursultan Nazarbayev, on convening the Congress of the Leaders of World and Traditional Religions, which has become an important contribution of Kazakhstan to global security. Interconfessional dialogue has developed to a new level. The Fifth Congress of Religious Leaders, held in June 2015, was given special attention on the global agenda. Its main goal was to unite two key powers, spiritual and political leaders, capable to change the world for the better. In the 21st century, there is no alternative to dialogue, be it politics, economy, culture or religion. Today, mankind possesses huge resources, scientific and intellectual capabilities. The progress is impossible unless people learn to live in peace and spiritual accord with each other. It was evident from the speeches of the participants that the need for a new format of dialogue has been in place for many years now. Kazakhstan has initiated dialogue between religion and politics since the challenges in interconfessional, religious and secular relationships began to affect fundamental basics of the modern world order. Therefore, the Astana Interreligious Summit has been attended by 80 delegates from 42 countries, including UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon visiting the forum for the first time. Thank you for your timely initiative, Mr. President, to promote a much-needed dialogue uh, between religious and political leaders from around the world to enhance understanding and build a culture of cooperation and mutual respect. It's not simply a noble aspiration in this part of the world. It is your history. It has made you who you are now defining the region and enriching the world. Through this Congress and other efforts, you recognize that a harmonious society can never be taken for granted. It must be nurtured day after day. It needs a special care. I thank you, Mr. President, for your efforts to ensure that these challenging issues are a fundamental part of the social agenda and the global agenda. The Astana Religious Forum allowed to reveal common ground for religious and political leaders in addressing the most acute issues of our time. The capital of Kazakhstan has become a place where new horizons of cooperation are opened and international ties are strengthened. Kazakhstan has great respect for your country. I would also like to highlight the important role that you play in ensuring stability in the region where Jordan is located. In this regard, Kazakhstan always stands ready to support you. It is always an honor for me to, to, to be here and to see uh, a dear old friend and to be able to exchange and, and uh, uh, as you look uh, to the north, to the east, to the west, to the south, uh, I have been watching with great admiration for uh, many years, um, uh, your role in bringing peoples and religions together. And so this is one of the reasons why I always uh, cherish the opportunity to meet with you and to learn from my, my dear friend. The global community rightly praised a timeliness and relevance of the initiative of the President of Kazakhstan, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, to develop interconfessional dialogue. 
a new point of attraction for all powers seeking peace and consent has emerged on the world's political map. We also need countries like uh, Kazakhstan who stand ready to host these discussions. Consistent efforts by Kazakhstan to promote dialogue across religious boundaries are well recognized. Astana, which literally means capital, is today not only the capital of Kazakhstan, but also, in a certain manner, the world's capital for dialogue among religious leaders and scholars belonging to the major world religions. The President Nursultan Nazarbayev's initiative seeking to strengthen dialogue between the East and the West. The Religious Congress taking place in Kazakhstan is an event that stands on a global level. So let me first say that I think this is a remarkable and unique initiative by the uh, Kazakhstan and by your President Nur Sultan Nazarbayev. It's the fifth Congress, so it shows continuity. He brings together people of different world religions and traditional religions. So it gives us a sense of what are our shared concerns, our shared problems. And when we come together, we sit together, we also understand that there are some, we all have a shared sense of purpose. We all have a world that we want to live in, that we want to be beautiful, one based on mutual respect and mutual harmony as one family. So it is wonderful for us to come together and talk on such a platform. And it's a unique platform. It is very much important that the leaders of the world in traditional religions and representatives of international organizations have gathered today in one hall and are conducting dialogue to build peace. Prosperity is just a soil for the seeds of peace, and those who are involved in politics play an essential role in this process. However, we should not forget that one is better than religious leaders at taking care of the spiritual aspect. Since the first Congress was held, this forum has gained strong international recognition. This is a special merit of Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, who is a recognized architect of international security. The Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions, initiated by him, is one of the tools aimed to build a new type of a modern world order. All military conflicts must be stopped and a truce declared. All warring parties must sit down at the negotiating table, set up an agreement on the ending of violence, protecting civilians, and peacefully resolving all conflicts. Kazakhstan is doing everything to reconcile conflicting parties in different parts of the world. At the forum, the president declared five appeals that he proposed to include into the final declaration of the religious summit. First appeal to end hostility, protect civilians, and find a peaceful resolution to all contradictions. Second appeal to oppose strongly the use of force to resolve any political and religious disagreements at national and interstate levels. Third appeal to end mutual sanctions and to use the mechanisms of the United Nations and other international organizations to overcome the divisions and restore peace and security in accordance with international law. Fourth appeal to encourage media owners and publishers to cease using their media outlets. Fifth appeal to join efforts of religious and political leaders, states and societies alike to address the most pressing challenges of the modern world such as poverty, hunger, epidemic, unemployment and the effects of natural and man-made disasters. I would like to address to all political and social leaders to use their influence and power to stop wars and conflicts, as well as to reinforce trust in global politics. Definitely, it is impossible to change the situation for the better overnight. Contradictions have been growing over the centuries, and it is naive to think that they can be eradicated once and for all, overnight, or even in 10 years. However, there is one thing we can say for sure. 
forms like the Astana Summit do have an impact as they provide the ground for mutual understanding needed so much to overcome conflicts. How can we learn about each other if we do not communicate? We should keep in mind that dialogue is more unbiased than debate, more honest than polite conversation, and more agreeable than discussion. On behalf of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, we would like to congratulate you on the occasion of the Fifth Congress of the Leaders of World and Traditional Religions. We recognize all the participants, religious and political leaders, for their strong commitment in favor of peace, justice, and dialogue. We would especially like to thank President Nusultan Nazarbayev for supporting such an important initiative. The world is full of discrepancies between husband and wife, between business partners, between countries, and between religions. But discrepancies by themselves are not such a bad thing. What makes them dangerous is the lack of tolerance when each side is absolutely convinced it is right and not ready to coercive. The ancient Jewish custom of taking three steps backward teaches us that if you want peace, then each side should make these steps. Without that, it isn't possible to reach peace. A careful look into Nur Sultan Nazarbayev's activity reveals that his initiative to convene the Congress complements years-long diplomatic efforts of Kazakhstan to form the global security system. Kazakhstan's foreign policy achievements include anti-nuclear initiatives, regular conferences on interaction and confidence-building measures in Asia, and successful chairmanship of the OSCE and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, and the mediation efforts in resolving various conflicts. The call to peace and development in the world via dialogue of political and religious leaders is considered to be one of the major achievements of the Congress. This humane call has a strong aspiration and pursues an outstanding goal and contains strong arguments. Such a call is welcomed and encouraged particularly by those people who suffered from religious and ethnic prejudice and racism. Both the current environment and the position of the President Nazarbayev instills confidence into this Congress. His personal involvement in this forum demonstrates that he, the country and the people are interested in seeing Kazakhstan as an example to follow. Indeed, Kazakhstan is an example to follow. Kazakhstan's unique model of consent and unity and the Congress of the World and Traditional Religions are elements of one sequence. This is a spiritual matrix of our national development, which enables to interpret the term tolerance, not only as tolerance towards others. This is mutual respect and mutual enrichment of cultures. This is why many Congress participants have called on to adapt Kazakhstan's experience. Our challenges to go beyond the notion of tolerance were simply acknowledging or abiding the existence, existence of the other. No one wants to be merely tolerated as if there is something wrong with them. Tolerance must be more active and dynamic. It means reaching out to those who are different from us. It means recognizing that we can teach by learning from one another. Congress. The Astana Congress is a unique opportunity to raise the consciousness of humanity. This forum is initiated by the country where more than a hundred ethnic groups live in peace and harmony. People here have unity and social harmony, showing a good model for all societies and countries. The forum agenda was broad. The participants came to a common view that modern people should be taught not only to earn money, but also to live with dignity. Without education, religious literacy, and involvement of youth in active social, political, and economic life, it is impossible to fight against radicalism. The fight against ISIL or Al-Qaeda demonstrates that using only force measures are not as effective as expected.
We Muslims are facing a brutal attack by outlaws, Khawarij, who distort our faith to try to justify monstrous crimes. Nothing treats our religion with more contempt. Nothing hurts the Muslim people more than the actions of these elements. They agitate sectarianism and sedition. They mislead young people into abandoning their futures. They franchise their violence worldwide. And this violence, whether against Muslims or Christians or minority communities, is utterly condemned by Islam. It is important for everyone to understand that these groups are only a tiny minority of the world's Muslims. 1.5 billion good men and women. But a drop of them can poison a well. The Congress of Religions over the years has evolved as a main platform for interreligious dialogue and constructive discussions on contemporary issues. Dialogue between religious leaders and politicians is enriching international political life, bringing in moral sense and values. Meetings in Astana promote universal values across the world. All of this may come true only if followers of different religions are united as stated by Mr. President. Following his wisdom, we have been able to achieve this unity here in Kazakhstan. Common aspiration and unity were reflected in the final declaration of the Congress, which became an unprecedentedly substantive document in the Congress history. This document included all the five appeals of Nur Sultan Nazarbayev. Two days of the fifth Congress of the leaders of world and traditional religions have become history. They certainly have given the world a hope to avoid the worst scenarios of the world development and faith in humanity's wisdom. Thereby, we are sending a signal to those hot spots and those who act on behalf of religion, causing great damage to accord peace in our religions. Another important outcome of the forum is that dialogue of politicians and clerics, international organizations, and civil society will be continued. Dear Mr. President, you are the author of global initiatives which proved its relevance including the conference on confidence building and security measures in Asia, renunciation of nuclear weapons, strengthening of nuclear non-proliferation regime for the first time in history. You closed down semi nuclear test site having signed a decree and the convocation of this Congress of the leaders of world and traditional religions. On behalf of the Secretariat, we wish you, who is recognized as an outstanding statesman and politician worldwide, further success for the benefit of peace and security of all mankind. In this context, religious leaders can inspire others to commit good deeds and help to overcome the barriers of ignorance, fear and misunderstanding, while politicians can work to have them implemented in life. Joint efforts will have a synergistic effect in forming of a new system of global relations. The Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions will reach a new level of international cooperation, destroying the myth on the clash of civilizations.